first meeting of 2021. Um, I'm really excited that we were able to get everyone here and welcome our new cannabis task force liaison, um, Council Member Garner and Council Member Woods. Um, I also want to thank our staff that's here and participating in the meeting. We have our um, Director of Development Services, Flynn Fegg, here. Lieutenant Mike Viegas, our Code Compliance um, Supervisor or Lieutenant over at PD. And Patrick Donegan from the City Attorney's Office. Um, everyone is here to answer questions and provide information uh, for you. Um, we appreciate everyone being here. Any, everyone who mailed in your comments, we greatly appreciate that and we have shared it with staff uh, for them to review and consider. For anyone who'd like to make a public comment at today's meeting, we ask that you use the raise hand button. Um, it's in the reactions tab located at the bottom of your screen. All public comments will be limited to two minutes and we request that you, everyone is just um, patient as we get through all of them. I'm sure we'll, we will have um, plenty. Um, I did want to introduce our staff here at the Department of Special Program Compliance. Um, everyone on our staff um, is here to assist you, so you can always um, ask your questions to any of us. And um, if they don't have an answer, if I don't have an answer, we will definitely get back with you with an accurate one. So our executive program manager is Patrick Clifford. So if he wants to raise his hand so everyone can see him. Um, Hi, everyone. We also have our senior account clerk, Chantal Sterling. Um, and we have two R2 account clerks, Michael Milan, who I know more of you are familiar with, and also on standback. Um, not here today is um, Brian Valley. He is our um, judicial, our secretary and assistant, and he provides a lot of day-to-day -day, um, assistance with application processing as well. Um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with our public comment. So Patrick is going to moderate the uh, public comment. He will call your name and it's your time to speak. And then he will also let you know um, that if there is um, any um, you know, time that you ran out of time, he will let you know. And we just asked if you would you know, kindly end your comment at that point. Um, I just got a message. We do have Taylor people here from FIRE as well. So we are pretty well represented by the city for everyone to, um, here, so you're aware. So Patrick. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, yes, like as uh, Veronica mentioned, uh, please raise your hand using the reactions button on the bottom menu of your screen. I will then uh, uh, send you a quick message saying ask to unmute, and then you may proceed with your uh, public comment. Uh, so first one I see, um, Paula Auburn, I will go ahead and start with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I did send in written comments, which I will not repeat here, but I do want uh, people to know that the neighborhoods continue to be concerned about odor abatement and enforcement. And we're curious about where the overlay zone is in implementation and a little bit more information on um, odor complaints and citations and whether anyone has been closed down or fined because of complaints that are coming in. We have a concern about the lack of in-person staffing of the office. But again, all of that was in my written comments. So for the sake of time, I'm just gonna say thank you. And I look forward to the proceedings. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, Mr. Crawford. I'll go ahead and you may proceed. Uh, Good afternoon. Uh, staff and uh, council members. Uh, my name is Dieter Crawford and I just uh, wanted to discuss the cannabis social equity program and just uh, I'm just kind of here to listen tonight to learn a little bit more about the application process and when it's going to open. Um, I know the city recently received another round of grant funding and um, we have some community members that are interested in applying for the cannabis social equity program. So just here to hear a little more about that. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, uh, Joy Brown uh, Meredith.
Hi, uh, my name is Joy Brown Meredith, and I wanted to bring up a couple of things. Uh, first thing is just that we have this agenda today, and I'm glad that we're able to have this discussion. However, some of these items are already on the council agenda for a vote on Thursday. So um, I wish that we would have had more time to have discussion before it ended up already being agendized. One of the things that I wanted to talk about were the fees uh, for application. I mean, I already have mine, but um, you know, in 2018, we passed measure D here in Palm Springs. That was for uh, law enforcement. It was discussed at one of the cannabis committee meetings at that time by city staff. Uh, including the uh, former city manager, David Reddy, uh, that uh, we needed to support that uh, for the good of the town uh, for law enforcement because uh, we were ready to switch over to recreational at that time. And there was some discussion even at that time as to whether or not our city would switch over to recreational if that tax measure did not pass. So uh, it seems to me that the idea was with Measure D that that would be covering, uh, you know, application fees and code enforcement. And I see it, the city's talking about possibly needing six more code enforcement officers to regulate cannabis. I'm sorry, but I feel that that seems to be extreme uh, based on the amount of service of that kind at this point. Also, I wanted to say that the state of California is uh, voting, uh, Bureau of Cannabis Control is looking to set aside millions of dollars for cities to help with application fees. And so I just don't quite understand why we would be raising the, at the fees a thousand percent. Uh, to cover these sorts of things. So unfortunately, this is just very short time here. Uh, to to have this discussion. Okay, Marcus is saying the city's only proposing two code enforcement officers. Um, and I'm sorry if I misunderstood that. But I do want to still say, though, that Measure D was supposed to help with uh, any law enforcement, which is now code enforcement activities, if we went to recreational cannabis. And uh, also that the state is looking to give the city cities uh, grants to help with licensing and other uh, other additional fees that cities might be having uh, problems with. So that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Joy. And next speaker, uh, Jocelyn King. Hi there, uh, everybody. I just wanted to introduce myself to anyone who doesn't know me. Um, I'm Jocelyn. I am the vice president of the Coachella Valley Cannabis Alliance Network. Uh, and I would like to second uh, Joy's concerns around uh, fees and costs. Uh, certainly understand the need for some code enforcement, but um, yeah, I'm curious. I'll be curious to hear Veronica's report on what the intention is around hiring extra code enforcement uh, and what they'll be doing. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm super interested in um, what Dieter mentioned in terms of social equity as well, because i um, glad to hear the city got more money uh, for that program. And I know there was some assessments done, so I'm super interested in the outcome um, of that. And uh, yeah, I'm just here in case anyone has any questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Veronica. There's no further uh, hands raised um, for public comment. I have one, please. I don't, can't raise my hand from my cell phone. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Go ahead. And uh, you got two minutes. Thanks. Okay. I'm, I'm Julie Montanti, PSA Organica, 420 Bank. I was concerned about the annual fee of $10,000, the raisement of that, and how it's justified in regards to raising our annual application fee. I feel that uh, we pay enough in taxes now, if you're gonna help us on the other end, possibly, but that fee maybe should go to cultivation and distribution, considering that dispensaries have to pass that on to their patients and clients because we can't absorb any more fees. Thank you. 
And thank you. And I'd like to invite if there's anyone else on the call that called in, if you have public comment, feel free to let me know. Um, if not, Veronica, that does uh, show that no further public comment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and proceed then with our updates um, from staff. The first is from our special program compliance um, department. And I will actually starting with our social equity. So on March 5th, we were notified that we were awarded $869 thousand um, dollars. This grant funding is actually a type two fund that we applied for and were successful. This um, grant fund is direct is to assist with applicants, not only with their applications, but with um, their startup costs and ongoing costs, business development. And the way that we intend to assist is to provide grants. So the benefits of the grants are if you qualify, you, there's no payback or not. Um, we're hoping that you become successful business operators and you contribute with your taxes and help the community um, in that way, maybe employing from the community as well. That's how we're looking to reap back what we invest into our equity applicants. We're opening the um, application process June 1st. It will be online again. The difference this time is that we are going to have a social media campaign to help spread the word. Uh, we really want to make sure that we get this out to every member of the community who is interested and would like to apply. Um, we are also seeking to work with local community organizations um, and businesses um, that are minority owned who can help spread the word. If you know any or if you would like to assist, please email me. We're happy to work with you. This is early, you know, early in the stages of development, um, but we are really excited. Um, you know, we've been very successful with our first grant. Um, we received $100,000 and that was directly um, given to equity applicants here in Palm Springs. And we are happy to say that we have um, one of our equity businesses that is 100% um, equity owned and operated um, on Palm Canyon doing their thing every day. And we're very happy and would like to see more. Um, we also received a grant for an equity analysis, which we will be sharing um, with everyone in our community. Um, we will make it part of our social media campaign to get the word out um, with regard to our analysis, and it will also be published online for everyone's review. So we're looking at doing that in the next month as well. Um, so that's where we are on, on that. Um, we also are working on department communication and outreach, and for that, I'm going to turn it over to Patrick Clifford to discuss with you. Yes, thanks, Veronica, and good evening again, everyone. Um, so we will start doing a little bit more communication and outreach um, with the cannabis uh, stakeholders. Uh, we look to start here in June doing a monthly newsletter that we will uh, email out um, with a variety of uh, topics um, related to maybe information that we received from the stakeholders um, and definitely any important information that we would like to communicate out um, to, uh, to the stakeholders. Um, with that, um, uh, you can simply sign up onto our uh, stakeholders uh, email list. Uh, what I'll do is show you um, via uh, screen share really quick how to, how to get there from our website. Uh, so you can simply just uh, submit your email address and you'll be put on that, um, that uh, stakeholder uh, email list. Uh, so let me go ahead and share the screen uh, really quick here. All right, and if everyone could see, this is the uh, City of Palm Springs website. Uh, a real quick way to get to the cannabis website page uh, is if you just go to services, um, you'll see cannabis related business and activities uh, when you stay hovered into the uh, menu bar pops up. And this takes you right to our cannabis page uh, where you can get applications and such. Uh, but down here where it says, let's stay in touch, um, we do have a link right here that um, you just go ahead and select and we'll go ahead and uh, ask you for your first name, last name, and email. And you can also put some information and maybe some questions that you have, um, and it will get feedback directly to us. Uh, once you do submit that information, though, uh, you'll be put onto that uh, email list where we will then start monthly sending out those newsletters starting in uh, July. Uh, that's all I have as far as the communication outreach, unless, Veronica, uh, there is anything additional you want to add, um, but that was what I wanted to share. No, nothing to add. I'm just really excited to um, be interacting with all of our stakeholders. I think it's important that we keep our communication open. 
um, we don't need to have a meeting for you guys to reach out to us. So at any time, um, feel free to email or call, like I said, myself or any other staff member, and we'll be able to assist you. Um, at this point, I wanna move on to um, zoning, and we do have Flynn here um, to, uh, if you could just provide just where we are at with um, our, where the canvas overlay zone is and where we are with our grandfathered applicants. Thank you, Veronica. So in terms of the cannabis overlay zone, as many of you are aware, the overlay zone is located in the I-10 corridor uh, adjacent to both Indian Canyon and Gene Autry within the city of Palm Springs. Uh, in terms of the uses that are permitted there, essentially the cultivation uses and the type six and type seven manufacturing uses in addition to all other cannabis uses are allowed in the overlay zone. Uh, in 2019, the city council adopted changes to the zoning regulations to no longer permit the cultivation and type six and type seven manufacturing within the city core area. And so uh, any new proposals for those uses will need to be in the overlay zone. Uh, over the last uh, year and a half or so that we've had the overlay zone in existence, we've had about five or six applications come in for conditional use permits for cultivation and manufacturing in that area, as well as we've had a couple of new buildings that have come through the process and been approved for cannabis uses up in the overlay zone. So in terms of the overlay zone, things are going well there and uh, we welcome our cannabis businesses in that area. Uh, Veronica, I don't know if there's any specific questions about the overlay zone, but I'd be happy to answer those at this time. If there's any questions, we do welcome you to raise your hand at this time. Veronica, it looks like I do have two questions. Um, I have two hands raised. Um, uh, Paula Auburn was first. I'm not sure if you had your hand raised for question, but uh, you, you're feel free to speak. I really don't have any questions. I must have hit the wrong button. Okay. Uh, and I think part of my questions have been answered uh, by Veronica because I asked to have an update in my written comments. So thank you. Thank you. All right. I do see Joy Brown Meredith. Um, you're welcome to speak. Thank you very much. In the overlay zone, do you still need to get a conditional use permit for cultivation in that zone or is that zone just acceptable for cultivation like off of the I-10 freeway? No, you still do need to get a conditional use permit for cultivation and type six and type seven manufacturing in that area. One of the things we have done, however, is we've simplified the approval process for new buildings for cannabis uses, so they don't have to go through our standard architectural review process. So that's one incentive that we have for the overlay zone. Doesn't hurt to ask, I guess. I could always <laughs> wish. <laughs> Your you. council members are hearing you. <laughs> well, I don't have any property owners around me for uh, about 20 acres, but thanks. Thank you, and I do have one more from Mark. I'm Mark Lindquist representing the Gene Autry Neighborhood Organization. Can you share with, um, in the overlay zone how far south that goes into the neighborhood from the I-10 boundary and then the, also the east-west boundary? The southern boundary of the overlay zone is the Whitewater River, and so it doesn't go south of Whitewater. Okay. And does it span the whole neighborhood east to west? Uh, east to west along the I-10 corridor, yes. Okay, thank you. Does anyone on the call that might have called in via phone have any questions? I do have one more, uh, Joy. Uh, Paula, I just wanted to let you know that I released my permit that was at 2050 Executive that was near Asina and the Racket Club neighborhoods. I will not be pursuing that permit. It was too close to uh, neighborhoods as far as how the neighborhoods felt about that. And uh, I, I just 
I let that that license go. So I want you to know that that won't be an issue. Thank you. And you have been a very good operator and you are not one of the operators we're concerned about. So thank you. With that, we're gonna um, move on. Um, I, we do have attorney Don, uh, Patrick Donigan here. He's going to be addressing the um, subject of the fee increase. Perfect. Thank you, Veronica. Well, I appreciate you referring to me as Attorney Donigan. Pat or Patrick is fine for everyone on the call. Um, you know, as, as it pertains to the fees, you know, the city continuously reviews all of its fees to ensure that the city is recovering its costs of administering its various programs. And that's kind of the, the, the key idea behind fees is merely cost recovery. And of course, you know, the city's cannabis program isn't any different. As some of you have noted on tonight's call, the city is contemplating certain modifications to its fees related to cannabis. Um, and you know, to reiterate, these, these fees are spent solely to allow the city to recover its costs in administering its, its cannabis program. City staff is very, is very busy, lots of resources go into it. And that's kind of the, the, the reasoning for these proposed, proposed modifications. Um, and so you know, the, the, the point of, of this kind of, you know, minor report is to one put you know all, all the stakeholders on notice that that no final decision has been made it's 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 set to go before the city council i believe it's item 4b uh this 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 week but those are just preliminary discussions um and then it'll likely come back for a more formal final determination so if if, if there are thoughts concerns comments um you can always you know you know state them here but then also at those at those city council meetings um as well um, further, you know, if you desire any additional information, and I would like to be notified when any kind of that final decision on the modification to the city's fees will go before the city council, you know, of course, reach out to Veronica, any other city staff, even myself, and I can you know, forward the message to the appropriate person um, to ensure that, you know, everyone's kept you know, up to date and, and nothing really kind of goes on without, without the proper input from, from everyone here and, and, and anyone else in the city. So, you know, the, the, the purpose, at least of my report tonight, was not to get into any specifics in terms of, hey, this specific fee is going up from X to Y, um, but rather just to one, provide some level of notification, and then two, really reiterate that this is kind of standard practice for the, for the city um, in terms of all of its programs, not just, not just the cannabis program, and, and, and the key thrust behind it is, is, is merely cost recovery. Um, this is not this is not a revenue generator. This is not anything like that. It's, you know, the city expends X, X dollars on, on its cannabis program and, and, and wants to be able to recover X dollars um, through fees. So, you know, that's that's kind of the gist of, of, of my presentation tonight. But of course, I'm here to answer you know, any questions um, that I can that, that anyone has or, or if, if staff and Veronica, if you, if you think I missed anything, please let me know. open it up to questions at this time and Patrick will moderate that. Hi there, this is Julie Montanti. I'm sorry I don't have a hand raiser on my phone again. Patrick, thank you for your comments there, but I don't believe that that's true. I believe that our taxes are well endowed for the city that can uh, you know, take the place and help with those fees. A $10,000 fee is not justified. I'd like to see a budget of what we spent, what it costs for cannabis. Um, I just feel that it's extreme. Um, we get charged that from the state and more. So I don't understand. On one hand, you're giving equity grants to minority. And on the next hand, you're charging dispensary owners and cannabis people $10,000 more for a renewal fee. That our taxes alone uh, have helped the city far and beyond what has gone on. And I feel that is extremely high. Done. Got it. And, 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 and Veronica, you can, you can interrupt me. I'm not sure if we want to take all the public comments and let me respond, or if you'd like me to respond right now. Um, I think we'll take the public comments because some of them may have overlapping um, questions. Perfect. At the end, we'll have you give your response. Understood. Yeah, thank you. It looks like we do have two more. Um, I'll go to uh, Charlie Urban. Uh, yeah, I had a question. Um, do, do we have anything specifically um, stating where these um, 
fees that are being calculated, how the money is being spent, and as well, are we uh, putting some of that money back into the program uh, with the social equity? And if so, what exactly are we uh, putting it back into the the uh, kind of kitty to, to build on the social equity program and the aspect from the city and not just from the grant they were receiving? And um, I just would like to know about that question. Thank you, uh, Charlie. Uh, next uh, question comes from Joy Brown, Meredith. Um, okay, so in reading the, the staff report for Consul, I, I do see and agree with what Julie is saying, and that's that it, it appears that the that the increase would be for both the annual renewal and for new applications. I could see where new applications require a lot more staff time, uh, you know, planning department, uh, building department all sorts of different staff that's involved but as far as the uh, as the renewal fee for those that are already cannabis license holders it seems that that amount would be a lot less staff time taken for that but if I'm reading it correctly and maybe I'm not it seemed that uh, both renewal applications and new applications were that raised to ten thousand dollars thank you Thank you. Next question from E. Howard. Hi, everyone. My question is in regards to the equity program. Um, I was looking at the requirements as far as income wise. Due to the coronavirus and the unemployment benefits that were issued, would that be taken into consideration? Or will you guys just be taking into consideration what someone made at their actual job? All right, thank you very much. And last uh, question we have is from Rick Panty. Okay, <clears throat> so I wasn't really gonna speak, but, and I wanted to wait to find out if the renewal fees were affected on the fee raise. Uh, two things, all of this is numbers, math is math. So if the city says, we need this much money or we need this many lawn uh, and court enforcement officers. And this is what it's gonna take. And we're not really making a profit. This is just recouping our fees. Then that's math. And that's easy to figure out and put it out to the public. And if that's the way it is, it's the way it is. But when it comes to charging the kind of fee of $10,000, if that is the case for a renewal fee for existing operators, who are not doing that well right now. Between the COVID and everything, everyone thinks everyone's making a ton of money in the cannabis business if you own a dispensary. Not at all the case, especially some of the people that have come on board this last year. So if you wanna to come to Palm Springs and do business, it's brand new and the fee is this, then that's what it is. But if you've been doing your business here in town, I would think the city would wanna help and, and do no harm by possibly reconsidering those fees. Thank you very much for having the meeting. And thank you. Uh, if there's anyone on the call that called in via phone that has a question, feel free to uh, um, state your question. If not, Veronica, that is all the questions with hands raised. I have one more question. This is Julie Montanti. I wanted to know how many cannabis uh, businesses are on this call? Is there any way of showing how many of the cannabis owners are, are listening today? We can have them send us a comment and we can provide that follow-up to you. Unfortunately, um, when you sign in, it just displays your name, not your business name. I recognize some of the names offhand, but I know that um, for an official headcount, we would have to just, if you're here representing the business and would like to just send a message, um, you can send it directly to Patrick and if we can get it compiled for you by the end of this meeting, we can announce it. I just feel, Veronica, that there are a lot of cannabis stores really don't care like we used to in the old days and come to the city hall for the meetings. I don't think anybody really knows other than the old old people like us uh, don't know all the new ones and the new ones don't know us. So whether they care, whether they don't care, 
um, it's a fee. And again, in one instance, you're going to give equity to people that I don't even know if they know how to run a cannabis business. And on the other hand, taxing your original cannabis licensees, $10,000. So I'd really hope the council takes into consideration somewhere in the middle a budget for us since we're already paying three thousand dollars for our audits or i think it's either 25 or three thousand for our audits so we pay everything along the way as we go and including the state as well so i just want that to be taken into consideration and i thank you um, before I go to Patrick, I'm going to answer the, the, the equity questions um, real quick because I know that's something that um, is more I'm more familiar with than, than he is. Um, we are looking at ways to um, expand um, our equity program. We've been working with consultants on um, one of our grants to pay for those consultants for uh, program development. So we are looking at constantly ways that we can um, further develop and expand our equity program. We've been very fortunate in our grant applications and this most recent grant is to assist um, business owners permittees, not just with their um, licensing fees, but actually give them education, actually help them with business development, have access to um, you know, some any legal questions they need answered, job training. So we really are um, addressing those needs and this is a work in progress. So we welcome any and all who want to provide any type of input or suggestions for that. Um, with that, I'm going to give it to Patrick to answer the questions on the, the fee. Correct, Veronica. Thank you so much. And so, you know, I believe I, I, I jotted them, them all down. Of course, the, the equity program, I'm, I'm not going to touch as, as you just touched on it, but, but, you know, as kind of the, and I'm going to, I guess, use a colloquial term that I'm kind of sensing from the group, this idea of a sticker shock of, you know, what's, what's going on here. Um, you know, I, the only thing that, that, that I can reiterate is that, you know, the, the city proposes these fee increases and yes, they must back them up with, this is why we need this amount of money. It's not meant to, you know, fund other programs. It's not meant as a revenue generator. It, 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 it can't be it, rather what it is meant to do is to allow the city to merely recover its costs. And, and I understand that, you know, people say, hey, this is for renewal, basis a new application, it should be cheaper, it should be different. And, 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 and that is, you know, that is, you know, up to the, to the city council to, to ultimately determine. Um, I, I know there was some preliminary discussion and, and data. And once again, the staff report on, on, on item 4B kind of, you know, outlining saying, hey, here's, here's why the, 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 the city believes it's, it's, it's city staff, excuse me, believes the fee increase is is required, and, and and further justification will will likely be required in terms of hey, this is the you know this is the proposed you know this is the average number of hours uh, that Veronica or or, or or other staff use building you know and, and and planning need to do X Y and Z et cetera et cetera. So you know uh, it, it, it's definitely not lost on myself nor nor city staff in terms of the economic hardships and and and, and the impact of COVID um, and. All I can do is, is, is reiterate that this is not a revenue generating scheme from the city. This is merely for a way for the city to recoup its own costs. And, 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 and that's it. Um, I guess I, I will just end once again that no final decision has been made. You know, just because that, that was proposed in, in, in the staff report does not mean it's written in stone. Um, obviously, the two council members are, 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 are on this call today and, and, and they will discuss it. You know, I believe it's on, on this upcoming agenda and, and, and any future agenda. So that's all I have for that, Veronica. Um, thanks. Thank you. And, you know, I, I do urge you to read the staff report. One of the things when we first introduced the recreational program is we were so focused on the staff time for businesses, um, you know, reviewing the applications, the different departments that would be involved. That that's what we focused on. And the code compliance piece was not included. Um, we are going to have Lieutenant Vegas talk on code next, so um, he will definitely um, discuss that a little bit further. Uh, but I do want to pass it back to Patrick briefly. We did have um, some code cleanup items um, last month on the council agenda, so I just want him to briefly touch on that with um, everyone who's here as well. Perfect. Yeah. So the the the, the first one was kind of two main main slight modifications. Um, the first one is is to resolve 
a slight discrepancy between the then the, the existing city's cannabis ordinance and then the city's building and fire code, um, namely that in the event of a power outage, automatically or electronically locking doors must unlock um, the cannabis ordinance in the, in, you know, with the thrust of it being security said, nope, you need to have kind of this separate and, and, and you know, alternative power source to ensure it was locked. Um, that, that was not consistent with the building and fire building and fire code, excuse me, which makes sense, you know, power outage, we want the public safety officers to be able to have, you know, access to the, to, to the facilities. And then finally, the, the, the city's prohibition that no cannabis goods or cannabis graphics be visible from the exterior of the premise um, was, was removed only as it applies to dispensaries. So it's only for dispensaries. It's not for, for any other type of cannabis business, um, subject to certain restrictions, of course. Um, the kind of the, the main one is that, you know, you don't need to have those, those blacked out windows, but you also can't, you know, what the city was, was hoping, that, you, know, you know, trying to prohibit was kind of the, the jewelry store, kind of put it in the window with five lights showcasing it, you know, showcasing product like that. That's, that's still not permitted, but, but those blacked out windows and, and, and being able to see some cannabis goods is fine. Um, with one further caveat that any cannabis dispensary with a lounge use, um, that lounge use still can't be visible. So you can't have, you know, the lounge right in front and never be able to see the, the, the consumption of, of cannabis. Um, and, and that's it, Veronica. So with that, I'm going to um, hand it over to um, Lieutenant Mike Vegas to talk about our code compliance, uh, where we are and where we are going forward to. Good evening, everybody. Um, let's talk about code. So I want to give, I want to put, paint a clear picture for everybody to understand what code compliance is all about. So we have currently eight code officers and one code compliance secretary and a code compliance supervisor. We operate seven days a week. Mondays and Tuesday, we operate from 7 to 5 p.m. And then Wednesday through Sunday, we operate from 7 a.m. to 1 in the morning. So our officers handle vacation rental. Uh, they handle cannabis-related complaints. They handle all public use issues. To give you an idea of the volume that we deal with. So to date, we ha we've handled 2,065 code complaints. 1,050 came on the code hotline and 1,015 came on the My Palm Springs app. And then we also had an additional 465 vacation rental calls for service. People don't understand the, the, the volume of the workflow that our code officers are currently dealing with. And when it comes to cannabis, we're clearly operating reactively to complaints. Meaning if we get an odor complaint, if we have a code officer available, he responds, he or she responds to the code complaint and see verifies if we have an actual odor issue or not. Um, as everybody knows on this call, um, the odor issues we have received, we've received six this year and it's coming from the Kings Garden area. That's who our complaints are about. Um, we haven't got any other complaints throughout the rest of the city. And it's a, it's, it's continuously, we work with with Veronica's office and the owners of King's Garden to, to make sure those odor issues are, or complaints are minimized. So for the rest of the city, um, we, we are very busy dealing with everything. And thank God that the governor's lifting these uh, COVID emergency orders as of June 15th. So that's what we're hoping for because we're also been busy dealing with those types of issues and enforcing those restrictions. So, on this proposal, we're asking for two code officers to be solely dedicated to enforcement of cannabis. And what that entails is um, we need some checks and balances where um, we're supposed to be mirroring what the state, what the Bureau of Cannabis Control currently has in place under Title 16. I work with Veronica and our city attorney, Jeff, uh, to update our, our uh, city ordinances as it relates to cannabis. Um, and those will be proposed here soon. So, for example, if we were to do enforcement when it comes to our legalized cannabis uh, businesses, we have to do inspections. And these inspections include auditing of cannabis products, uh, financial audits, audit, audits of like if, he, if we have a manufacturer, uh, do they have the allotted uh, plants for the square footage in the room? These inspections, and I've done research with other agencies and 
our code detective has worked with the Bureau of Cannabis Control, they're, they're intensive. Um, more so for the manufacturers because they're big facilities as opposed to the, the, the dispensaries. Um, but we unfortunately don't have the resources in place right now to address these types of inspections uh, and proactively that, that the businesses are complying with not just our local ordinance, but also with the state um, regulations. So that, that is what we're looking to do in the future um, because we need to we need to have checks and balances in place, um, but um, I'm here to answer any questions that you guys might have with with code compliance and what what the the proposal is for the future of how we would address cannabis related issues. Come on, guys, you're making it too easy for me. <laughs> Yeah, Lieutenant, I do not see any hands raised. If there's anyone on the call um, for with the phone, feel free to ask the Lieutenant a uh, question. Thank you. I'm not on the phone, Patrick. This is Jocelyn Kane. Um, just wondering if you have any idea if these inspections are going to be surprised or are they going to be planned? Like how many are they going to do for different supply chain businesses in a year? <laughs> You know that's something that we'll have to de develop a strategy. But I am um, um, my my idea going into this. All the cannabis businesses should understand that if they're operating under the legal guidelines set with the city and the state, random inspections is the best way to do this. Um, and uh, not that we're trying to surprise anybody because we shouldn't. We, all our businesses should understand that when you get your license or your permit, you have to operate. You have to operate within those guidelines and regulations. I do have one hand raised um, from Rick. He's on mute. Sorry about that, I'm new to this. <laughs> Nobody has mentioned the black market and we just discussed the fact that this money that's being asked for is going to pay just for the cost of the services that are required. Just and, and more than likely that is the case uh, with, all, with the exception of the renewal. Is there ever going to be any money or and you're not one to, I'm not asking a question, but do you see the need for the black market to, for enforcement on the black market? And obviously the police department can't do it now because they don't have the funding for it. But I, I at some point have to address that. Well, Rick, I'm glad you bring that up because we do have a dedicated that's, um, he's part of the Riverside County District Attorney's uh, Cannabis Regulation Task Force. Um, once we, we took over code and we saw the need for the illegal dis legal manufacturers, dispensers, and so forth, um, there are not as prevalent in Palm Springs as in other parts of the county, but yes, we do have a, a sworn detective to investigate those types of uh, issues. Okay. Veronica, do you not see any uh, hands raised for questions? Hey, um, I, I did see one question here in our comment, in our chat box, and if, if Taylor is here, I'm hoping he can answer it. He wanted to know um, what the building code is for electric failure with regard to banks and pharmacies. I'm not seeing that he's still on the call, Rick, but I will get okay. that for you and send it to you. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so with that, I'm going to, we're going to move on to our council members um, for their comments and um, any questions from you may direct. So we'll start with um, Council Member Woods. Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to give acknowledgement to each of you that are here, and I want to thank you for your participation, be it from the cannabis industry or from a neighborhood. It's very important. Um, I also want to thank the city staff for being here and for Veronica for introducing so that you can put a face to who you're dealing with when you call City Hall. Um, and if you don't know who that is, um, you can ask at the end of this call. I also want to acknowledge our Dean, Paula, and Didier who actually sent in comments ahead of time. Um, I might suggest that you also send those comments to the city clerk to distribute to the city council as, in, in large. And I tell you that because on this Thursday's city council agenda, there are three items that may be of interest to you that you should be aware of. 
Um, Joy and Julie had already talked about one and that's the fees. That's item 2C on the agenda, 2C. And if you're interested in talking about that, I would get in touch with the city clerk and basically put your name in and they'll call you to speak on that or tell you when you can speak on that. Um, another item is item 3A, again, 3A, and that's the labor peace agreements. Um, and um, Council Member Gardner can talk about that in a minute. The last one is item 4B, again, 4B. That's the comprehensive budget, and that's actually where they're putting in the request for two additional code enforcement officers. So if you're somebody who would like to see a more proactive approach to cannabis, this would be your time to put in your two cents. And again, I contact the city clerk, uh, either by email or by telephone and let them know that you want to speak at the city council meeting and they'll put you in the queue. And then what they usually do is call you up um, when they're ready for you. Um, I also wanted to clarify something um, that was said by the attorney. Um, we really don't want blacked out windows on our cannabis facilities anymore. Um, Flynn Fagg may be able to talk to this a little better. We really want to keep our cannabis facilities to be transparent. And we don't want to make our um, main thoroughfare, particularly Palm Canyon, to look with blacked out windows as you go through. We want to make it basically look um, like some of you have seen already the lighthouse, kind of open and free. We do realize if you have a lounge, you may need to do some partitions or whatnot inside to keep the visibility of the lounge um, not visible from the public right of way. But we wanna keep our downtown as vibrant as possible. And that really means we really do not want blacked out windows as an option. I know that was an option in the past. There was some confusion over state law. Um, we've clarified that with the update to the ordinance. Um, and with that, um, again, I ask for your, I would ask for your participation coming up on Thursday, if you have any interest in any of those items I just mentioned, and I'll turn it over to Council Member Gardner. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's nice to see you all here. You know, this is a really general um, first meeting as we're, we're getting back into this. So I appreciate hearing all of the, the varying comments on this, these topics. Uh, in terms of the labor peace agreements, uh, basically what this is, is, is cannabis businesses working with labor unions. Labor unions will say they're not going to picket you, uh, but you as a cannabis business owner are going to um, make a work environment that is allows for union organizing if they so want to, if your employees want to. Um, this would apply to any business with five or more employees. Uh, I do encourage you to take a look at it and the staff, the initial staff report is only a few pages. Um, so if you want to take a look and, and see what you think and send us your comments, I, I think that would be appreciated. Um, it is, it is uh, pretty straightforward. So, but if you do have questions about any of the text in it, you know, please feel free to, to email us and, and we can provide some more clarification. Um, I know there was a question here about um, where do council members stand regarding fee increases and justification. Um, this is something that's been proposed and we're, we're looking at. And I know I have a lot of questions and some of you have already raised things that I hadn't thought about that I want to ask as well. So this is definitely an ongoing process. And um, I don't know if any of you watched last year's budget meetings, but I definitely very much get into the details on this stuff. So um, I will raise the questions that you've raised already um, and, and some others and then see see how it goes. Because right now I, I, I can't answer you specifically because I don't know the answers to the questions that you've just raised. Again, I wanna thank everyone for being here. I know this, um, the agenda was very um, generic and that was actually intentional. We really wanted just to um, have a time to, to meet with everyone, get conversation going, open it up for some questions. Um, we definitely will have another meeting and our next meeting will be more focused. I really urge you to contact our office with topics that you want to hear about. We are introducing our um, newsletter next month. And again, that will be really informational. Um, we'll be passing on information from the state, information from the city, and any topics of interest that, um, related to the industry that you want to see, please let us know. We're happy to include those as well. 
Um, at this time, though, we are going to conclude the meeting. Um, if something we missed something that you felt um, was important, please email and we'll make sure to share it with appropriate staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.